Welcome to Goobertown Hobbies, my name is Brent. Today we're painting a random model with a random paint scheme. So what I've done is I've gone through my pile of shame and I have rounded up some of my my favorite minis that I've been meaning to paint but I just haven't gotten around to yet. And today we're gonna paint at least one of them. So what I want to do is kind of breeze through the possibilities here real quick so that you have an idea of the stakes and you can have something to root for. Um, I've got a, got a D8 to make that selection, so if I roll a 1, that's going to be Malifaux. Now, some of these boxes have multiple characters in them, and if I get one of those, we'll either roll the dice again to figure out exactly what we're painting, or I'll just take a look and make an executive decision and uh, paint something that I think will really fit the prompt. Uh, 2 is this Shadow Sea from Antimatter Games, and this box has... Amazon warriors and lizard people and raptors with feathers, uh, a lot of good stuff. Uh, three is Moonstone. I've got a couple of characters here. I've got Sir Hogswash, Sir Hogsworth, and uh, Ribald. Uh, four is Creature Caster, so big resin monsters. I've got a big resin dragon and uh, a big Canadian chimera. Um, five is Star Wars Legion. So I've got Luke's land speeder, except there's rebels riding around in it, and they have a space bazooka, so really good stuff. Uh, six is War Gods of Egyptus, and <laughs> those are crocodile warriors. I don't, I don't know what else to say. Um, hello, Snuffles. Uh, seven is Arena Rex. Arena Rex. Now I have four uh, gladiators for Arena Rex, and... I'm sure one of them could be a good project. And eight is Kingdom Death. So I've got the the white Giga Lion set here. And yeah, so so the white Giga Lion set, and there's a, there's a big lion in there, and there's four like human survivors. So really a lot of great possibilities here. Let's uh, let's get ready to roll the dice. Now I've got a D8 for the models, I've got a D6 for the theme. The theme for this season of Goobertown Roulette is seasons. So uh, the faces one through four are for spring, summer, autumn, winter. And then the fifth face is underground or indoors, somewhere where the seasons don't matter. And finally six is an alien world or a fantasy world, somewhere where the seasons don't make sense. So, let's roll these two dice and figure out what we're doing. Okay, Snuffles is Snuffles is blocking the roll here. Okay, I got a 5 and on the D8 I got a 2. So, that is Shadow Sea and we are doing this indoors or underground. Well, 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 look at what fate has given us. This is Shadow Sea, the Battle of Deadwood Forest, made by Antimatter Games. I picked this up at Gen Con 2019. The vendor hall at that convention was massive. Now, it's easy to get tunnel vision in this hobby and focus on one or two games, but there are hundreds of mini games out there. I wandered that huge convention hall for days, and I ended up making just three purchases. And unfortunately, all three of those new games did end up in my pile of shame, but it looks like I'm finally getting to this one. Aztec Ladies with Feathers and Dinosaurs with Feathers. Lots of pretty colors on the printed materials. I got pulled right in. The game designer was there at the booth, and they tried to tell me about the game, but all I heard was Raptors with Feathers. I pulled out my wallet and acquired Shadow Sea. These are resin minis. The big lizard has a few gaps that need filling, but for the most part these models are great, and the detail on them is very, very fine. There are eight different figures in this box. I've got to get inspired, pick at least one of these, and find a way to put them indoors or underground. So magical robots aren't really my thing, but everything else in this box is. Aztecs, raptors, lizards with guns, lizards with throwing knives, and lizards with wolverine claws. 
That, plus all the pretty colors in this box, are what got me to buy in the first place. Now's my time to finally paint one of these minis. The humanoid characters are probably the way to go for an indoor scene. I'll save the raptors for some other day. Cause Coddle here looks like she's using this flaming skull as a light source, and that'll be great as she's exploring an underground tomb. Let's figure out a fancy base or a diorama that we can do for Cuscoddle, the Enchantress of Zibalba. I've got something else in my pile of opportunity that might fit with this. The Kazumi Temple from the Ramparts line. Archon Studio sent me a few samples of their scenery, and this one totally jives with the Central American feel. These could totally be interior walls in a temple or a tomb. I'm gonna mine this terrain kit for whatever I need to set the scene. The experimentation phase is a lot of fun. The more I'm playing, the more I like the idea of a buried temple. There are so many ways that we could convey this idea, and so many great bits that we could use in a little diorama. In these Goobertown Roulette projects, I often spiral to bigger and bigger ideas. In this case, I was thinking about building multiple levels of this temple. Maybe doing a cross-section of a hillside with raptors on the surface, and Kuzkadal here underground in the Kazumi Temple. And maybe she's about to get attacked by a lizard with a pistol hiding in the shadows. But I managed to convince myself to keep it simple this time. Let's try to keep the focus on the mini and not turn this into a sprawling terrain project. Let's use the temple just to frame Kuzkadal and put her in context. I am unreasonably proud about this design. Kuzkadal is exploring a lost temple, She's just walked through this door into a cavernous room that has been empty for many years. Rows of pillars hold up the ceiling, and they extend in all directions past the sphere of light cast by her skull lantern. That's the imagery, but the diorama itself is just a door behind her and a couple of pillars. I'll try to tell the rest of the story with the way I paint and light the scene. The wood that I'm using here for the base of the diorama came from a broken futon that I found on the side of the road. That futon was past repair, but I got a lot of nice hardwood out of the find. Look at that pretty grain. I cut a length of that futon hardwood to match the entranceway from the Kazumi temple set. I am really excited about this simple design. I think it's going to frame the model really well. Now let's get started on Kuzkadal herself. I primed with red-brown. I think this is a great color to prime with, especially for characters that are showing a lot of skin. Skin is translucent, and a little bit of deep red showing through underneath makes sense. The detail on this small resin mini is extremely fine, and I want to be careful not to clog it up. I bought a set of Pro Acryl paints recently, and I'm going to be using them on this project. They're definitely thinner paints than what I'm used to, so I figure I'm less likely to gum up the details. I like the color choices that the studio artist used for this game, so I'm going to use this card art as my guide. I often ignore box art and try to come up with my own schemes, but I think going with the card art here fits with the spirit of Goobertown Roulette. Letting someone else pick the paint scheme allows me to focus on other aspects of painting. For this character, the big challenge is going to be getting the lighting right. She's underground, and that glowing skull is a light source. I guess we're doing object source lighting. It's a bluish skull that seems to be emitting a cold white light. First I'm just getting a layer of base coats down. I want to get a feel for the mini, and then I'll try to do some lighting and shading to sell that object source lighting effect. Lighting the temple correctly is also very important, so let's keep going on that base. I'm using nails and milliput epoxy to really secure the plastic terrain bits to the wooden base. It's simple and clean, and I think it's really effective. I got the edges of the base taped up. I coated everything in Loctite spray adhesive, and I sprinkled on some very fine sand. This gives a nice texture to the floor and walls of the temple. I primed it black and took off the tape. The plan is to start from black, and then use a dry brush to light the scene with skull magic. The wooden base has a bit of height to it, so I thought it might be fun to name the scene. There's a lot of options for this. I could try to paint letters on the side, or maybe 3D print a little plaque. I tried using a soldering iron to do some wood burning, but it was really slow and also really hard to control. Using a sharpie marker on the wood didn't look good either. 
and then I thought about calling a local trophy shop to see if they could engrave a little brass plate to stick on the front. I ended up calling a local engraver, and I found out that they had a wood-burning laser. I paid him 18 bucks, and I got Kazumi Temple written on the plinth. It looks pretty cool. I try to always be learning and exploring while I'm working on a project. This is my first time putting a name on a diorama. I think it's a fun accent, and it helps to set the scene. It's also useful to get to know some local craftspeople. It's good to know what skills and tools might be available in your area when the inspiration strikes. $18 was worth it to me to try something new and broaden the horizons a bit. And who knows, maybe this will plant a seed and I'll get really into wood burning someday. Okay, so here are some makeup brushes. Now, I don't understand makeup brushes, but it seems like the ones with short soft bristles work great as dry brushes. I'm going to use browns and greens to give the stone just a bit of color. And then I'm going to use vanilla and just a bit of blue to bathe this temple in light from a magical skull. I want the skull to be casting a circle of light on the floor that gets dimmer towards the outer edges. I want the faces and corners of the rock columns that face Cuscottle to be lit in flickering light, and I want the other faces to remain dark and mysterious. This is coming along nicely, so let's get back to work on Cuscottle. The light from this skull is the only light in the room, so let's get to work on adding light and shadows. For the skin, I decided to use mixtures of pale flesh tone and mahogany. Some of the flesh is going to be lit up, and some of it is going to be shadowed. This is starting out super crude, but I'll try to refine the blends a bit as I go. For the gold, I'm transitioning from light golden brown to that same mahogany. Okay, let's light up our skull so that we can really imagine the light and shadows that it's creating. I'm highlighting with a lighter shade of blue, and then I'm highlighting again with pure white. This basically matches the look from the character card but I'm trying to emphasize that the skull is casting white light instead of blue. That'll make the lighting effect a bit easier to paint. But also, I like the colors on this mini, and I don't want to diminish them by giving them a blue filter. Now let's do a few targeted washes. This will add a bit of definition, and also give us more room for dark to light contrast when it comes time to do the highlighting. I'm using black null oil for the feathers and hair. Then I used a bit of the new Army Painter speed paint on the skull. I realized that if the skull is too bright, then it'll pull attention away from Coscoddle herself. Of course, the skull is the brightest object in the room, but artistically, I want the focus to be on Coscoddle's face. We'll dull the flames down a bit for now, and we can always bring them back a bit later. Next up, Agrax Earthshade on the gold bits. The detail on this part of the mini is particularly fine, and I wasn't sure that it would actually take wash well. But I gotta hand it to Citadel washes on this one. The Agrax does a great job at penetrating and finding those tiny, tiny inlays. I think we're really heading in the right direction here. I pulled out a tiny Squidmar brush, and I painted all the straps and sandal wraps. And now the eyes. I started by giving her some jade eyeshadow, just a quick swipe under each brow ridge. This is the first time that I've done eyeshadow on a mini, but it will not be the last. You know, I should really spend some time learning about makeup. With my tiniest brush, I gave Coscoddle some ivory eyes and some black pupils. Here's the result. I'm actually quite happy with this, especially on such a small face. When I paint eyes, I don't worry about the surrounding area, because it's relatively easy to come back in with some flesh color and clean up the borders. And there we go! Some red mixed with her flesh tone, and she has lips now too! Things are coming along nicely, and it's time to really start juicing that lighting effect. I want one half of the model shadowed, and one bathed in light from this magical skull. The base color on that gold is golden brown but now I'm switching to bright yellow to really make it shiny. I'm dabbing on some yellow wherever I think light will hit. So that cobra hat is getting yellow under his chin, but not on the top of his snaky head. Look at me, fancy man doing object source lighting and non-metallic metal all at the same time. I don't blend so good, but I guess blending doesn't matter as much with so many tiny bits of metal. 
After the yellow highlights, I dropped a bright white highlight into the center of a few of them for some nice shiny glints. Framing her face with shiny gold is really helping to pull attention where I want it to be, so I'm willing to put a little bit of white back onto our magical skull. I want it bright, but I don't want it to pull focus from Coscoddle. I did a bit more highlighting on her skin, and we are getting close. This is exactly how I wanted this model to look. Well, I wanted my blends to be smoother, but that's alright. When I started this project, I was tempted to paint the whole model relatively bright, and then use a dark brown ink through my airbrush to shade the shadowed side. But it's nice to step away from the airbrush sometimes and work on the old brush skills. It's time for another test fit on the base. Oh yeah, I'm liking this. And, while we're at it, Let's grab some shots of some other heroes running through the Kazumi Temple. Good ol' Johan, what's he gotten himself into this time? What terror is coming up behind him? I spent another 30 minutes cleaning up a few things, and then I was ready to call her done. We've hit the point of diminishing returns on fun. I'm willing to write off my lazy blends as vagaries of the flickering magical light. It's time to clip her off with a temporary base and get her glued down to the Kazumi Temple display base. The last thing I want to do is use a black dry brush and an ivory dry brush to fine tune the lighting on the base. I'm giving her a shadow on the ground and also a bit on the wall behind her. And you know what? It actually kind of works. So here we are. Coscoddle has entered the Lost Temple of Kazumi. Room by room, she's exploring trying to discover the secrets that this place holds. I'm super happy with how this came out. Not quite a diorama, not quite a display base, but a nice way to frame our mini and give her a story without going too far overboard. It gives the feeling of being enclosed, while still letting us see her from multiple angles. The lighting puts a spotlight squarely on Coscoddle. Look at those colors. Greens, reds, yellows, and blues. This is the kind of color scheme that makes me smile. Her character card from Shadow Sea was great inspiration. The dice picked our project today. I might have rolled spring, summer, fall, or winter, but underground and totally out of the weather was a wonderful prompt for this figure, and it was an excuse to find a gem in my pile of shame. I'm glad I bought this set from Shadow Sea. The minis are great. The raptors with feathers are still in my pile of opportunity, but they'll get their chance one of these days. Well, that's it for today. I've been busy working on a ton of new projects, and I promise I'll see you again soon. As always, thank you so much for watching.